Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City of Montpelier Development Review Board for our meeting for April 1st, 2019. My name is Daniel Richardson. I serve as chair of the DRB. The other members from my right are Rob Goodwin, Kevin O'Connell, Meredith Crandall, staff, Kate McCarthy, Ryan Kane, Tom Kester. All right. Uh, first order of business is approval of the agenda. Anybody have a motion for the agenda? So moved. Motion by Kevin to approve the agenda as printed. Second. Uh, second by Tom. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the agenda as printed, please raise your right hand. We have an agenda and we can move forward. There are no comments from the chair this evening. The sole minutes are the March 18th minutes. Myself, Kevin, Kate, Tom, Ryan, Rob, all eligible to vote. Uh, presuming that you've all had a chance to take a look at the minutes, do I have an do I have a motion for their approval or any amendments that people wish to make? Mr. Chair, I move approval of the March 18th, 2019 minutes as printed. Motion by Kate. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> I'll go with Ryan, who was a little bit ahead of the, <laughs> the curve on that one. Second by Ryan. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval of the March 18th minutes, please raise your right hand. Very good. Thank you very much. So this evening we have three applications. Uh, one of them is a uh, sketch plan that comes uh, last, and I'll explain the difference of that when we get to the 301 River Street. The first two are subdivision applications, and I will simply note uh, that the second one I will be recusing myself, but I am able to hear the first application. So we'll call that for 213 Main Street, uh, Robert Gowns. There's one more additional piece. This is um, information that was requested at the sketch. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. I, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so if you'll state your name for the record. Yeah, Robert Gallons. Okay, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Very good. Is anyone else here to be heard on this uh, subdivision, this particular one? Okay. So, Bob, if you want to just give us an overview uh, of where things stand and uh, with a particular focus on any changes that you've made since our initial sketch plan review? All right. Um, so it's a, it's a two-lot subdivision at 213 Main Street. Um, I think everything is the same as at sketch, um, but I'll just quickly go over it. The proposed new lot one, and that's the lot that my current house sits on, will become a 10,436 uh, 1,000 square foot with 94.78 feet of frontage and the new proposed lot 2 would be 8,390 square feet with a frontage of 60.7 60 feet uh, and that's the frontage on that. What I gave you tonight was it was just a requested sketch of one, where the slope is on that property. So that's what the yellow is, mm -hmm. there's the slope. It's a level lot, slopes down and then levels out again. And then um, in the blue, that would just be a, uh, like a hypothetical building footprint that would fit on that parcel. Those were two things that were, that came up at sketch. Okay. And just to be clear, you're not proposing a house at this time. This not is just simply anything. yeah, this is subdivision. Yeah, this, create this uh, lot. Step one. Right. Step one to get through this, and then uh, once get through this process, then proceed to the next step. Whether um, well, after the step, you have a separate lot. Uh, yes, but then <laughs> you asked if I was proposing a building, and not right. at this time, no. Just, okay. Uh, um. Just for clarification purposes, really. Meredith, did you have any points that you wish to raise initially? 
No, I think this this was the biggest. This and the actual location for the driveway easement with the two big things that came up at mm -hmm. Sketch. Um, you know, they they don't have to show a building envelope, and we don't want that on the final plat. But I know that the board members were curious to make sure that there was room on this lot between the slopes and the setbacks for a building. Mm -hmm. Right. And and this sort of square that you've drawn is that to any particular scale, or is that just sort of a general? Just general. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I'll note that it's roughly equivalent in size to your house. Yeah, that's that's what I tried to capture. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bert, is there any further comment from Public Works or the technical team? No. Nope. Okay. There were there was nothing new that they felt like they had to add. And so let's address the driveway issue. Um, can you refresh our memory as to how you're proposing? For driveway access on this. Okay, um, two ways: uh, extending the current. And I, I talked to Public Works about this, and their preference is to extend the current curb cut and not put in an additional curb cut. Mm -hmm. So a combination of extending the current curb cut and then an easement across the current driveway. So it'd be an easement, and it's it, it's hard to see on this. Um, it is marked on here from the survey. Mm -hmm. So there'd be an easement across the current driveway. And, and the current driveway would be a little wider based on um, about an eight foot increase in the curb cut. So just extending it and not putting in an additional one. So extending it further up Main up Street. Up the hill, yes. Okay. And then would this be sort of like a shared driveway? Yes. Um, well, there'd be access across the current driveway for the for lot two. Okay. Yeah. But uh, parking only on lot two. There wouldn't be you wouldn't be allowing cars to park Correct. on lot one. Correct. Um, so one of the issues that we have to address, at least, is um, that there's a provision <coughs> in the new bylaws about driveways and that would be uh, under 3000 uh, 3010 3010 that talks about spacing of driveways um, it does sorry I'm just going to go to that section what section did you uh so, so it's uh, section 3010, which is page 3-20 and 3-21. So <clears throat> it talks about having a separation distance. Um, It has to be at least 45 feet. Yeah. Between driveways. Between driveways. Um, now there is a exception for non-conformities and a, yeah, and a I waiver think, process. Yeah, and there's just the, because of the way they're expanding the current mm -hmm. non-conformity by way, making the driveway wider. Right. So, so I think, you know, it's a question of how you want to deal with it. Right, and I'm I'm raising this both for you, Bob, as well as the board. I, you know, so it says that previous sites, previously developed sites with non-conforming access, shall come into conformance with the provision of the section when changes are proposed to site layout, access to circulation. And subsection A says the development review board may approve a waiver for this requirement where the applicant demonstrates the proposal cannot come into compliance due to the physical characteristics characteristics of the lot or existing structures on mm -hmm. the lot. So part of the problem is, is that your driveway is located really to one side, your existing driveway. And what Public Works has said is that it's preferable for you to, cro to combine these driveways rather than to create a whole separate new curb cut. Um, and some of that was to, because as you go further up Main Street, there's a little drop off there mm -hmm. from the sidewalk down. So um, to put in a curb cut, it would be, it would be very steep. 
it actually so turning off of the of Main Street, you'd immediately have to sink down. Yes. Um, or rise up as you were coming out. Yeah. Uh, and so it was Public Works opinion that it would be safer. And that, for, for sight and mm -hmm. as well as for the actual process of turning. Mm -hmm. So. And, the, and I should note that there's nothing in the bylaws that's prohibit a uh, shared driveway. Shared driveways are shared driveways are actually preferred when you can sometimes, I think. Especially for commercial. Yeah, especially for commercial. Yeah. But in this instance, yeah, there's nothing to prevent a shared driveway at all. It's just that the driveway separation standards that we've adopted don't quite fit this, yeah. this standard. Um, well. <clears throat> This or this site, I mean. Yeah, they don't quite fit this site where the existing driveway is already too close to a different one. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what's a? Is the board inclined to grant a waiver here? I mean, because that's why I understand is part of your request is to grant a waiver of these driveway um, conditions. Bob, is that? Yeah. Nod your head. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't, I mean, just looking at the maps, it doesn't even, so there's 55 feet of frontage on the proposed lot two. Mm -hmm. The driveway that's an issue is the one directly across the street from the existing driveway. I, I don't think it's, I mean, just even from what we have, it's likely not possible to put in a new driveway on proposed lot two that would comply. Right. And so therefore, I don't, I mean. Yeah, it's just one of those. The DRB has to be the one to approve the waiver. Right. So yeah. I'm, I'm inclined to okay. approve the use of the existing driveway to serve yeah. lot two, yeah. given that the alternative is not possible. Or, or preferable. I mean, it sounds like a hardship in some respects. Sure. Yeah. And Public Works has reviewed this. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And, and is uh, okay with it, so okay. I'm yeah. inclined to grant it as well. So yeah. the next issue is uh, the utilities. Uh, particularly the electric and data lines, the telecommunication. Uh, the utilities serving your house, your current house, are across Main Street? Yes. So they, they go over. What is your proposal for utilities uh, for the new property? Would it be, have you looked into that question? I've not gotten that far, no. Um, I assume it would be overhead across also. Okay. And probably from, it would have to be from the, that same pole because otherwise the spacing is, it would be too far up the street. Mm. We've actually dealt with this recently. So one of the things the new bylaws do require is the burial uh, of utility lines where possible. Um, but this looks like a very similar circumstance to what we dealt with two weeks ago. With, um, with overhead lines, where to bury the lines would require going under Main Street uh, to do so. Um, and it, so you haven't, you haven't approached Green Mountain Power as to whether they, they would run a separate line off of the utility line or something off of your, your house? I have not, no. Um, I talked, um, no, uh, only uh, I talked with Public Works on water and sewer, mm -hmm. and that is on um, uh, my side of Main Street. So, right. So um, that was not going to be an issue because that is on that side of Main. But I, I have not talked to Green Mountain Power. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I think we can take note that this is, I mean, this is the exact same problem we had two weeks ago, which is, you know, the only way to run lines from the from from the power power lines mm -hmm. underground would require going <laughs> underneath main street which the city has expressed in prior applications that they do not want to do um, it would be a disruption first of all and then it would uh, effectively um, create a, a not that it could necessarily be noticed amongst the potholes these days, but um, it would certainly unlevel the, the, the road there, which is a major artery in and out of the city. Um, what are the other board members? 
The speed bumps could be part of the complete streets plan. They could. <laughs> Silver lining. Plenty there now. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't necessarily be your responsibility. No, I, I, fi I find that there's many factual similarities between the uh, the last time that this came up and yep. this current application right. based upon the location of the poles and uh, the significance of the road and, and the blockage and sort of the intent of the regulations in this sort of situation. Mm -hmm. I agree. So the next issue is, um, and I understand part of this is because you're not at that stage yet uh, of planning for a house, but you know, the, right now the uh, the lot is open uh, without any particular trees or mm -hmm. shrubs. Um, one of the things that we're asked to do, and it says applicants shall design the subdivision to maximize the preservation of existing mature vegetation and provide additional landscaping which may be installed when lots are subsequently developed as necessary to and then it gives a series of subcategories of maintaining privacy between adjoining property owners, enhance the appearance of street frontage and shade streets uh, and sidewalks, maintain or establish vegetative buffers along waterways or other natural areas, and utilize green, green storm water infrastructure practices. So I mean, it looks like you're not proposing to remove any trees because there really aren't any to remove. But um, would you? be in uh, amenable to a, um, a condition that would require you to adopt once either you or whoever does develop this lot some type of landscaping plan I, I think one of the concerns I have is and you probably share this is whoever occupies this house is going to be very close to you mm -hmm. um, and you may want some separation and distance between the two houses or some some something to break up so it's not just you staring out your garage at your neighbors eating dinner. Um, so uh, I think the bylaws allow for a landscaping plan to be adopted in a sort of a larger context, which is a, as a condition that when it's developed, an appropriate landscaping plan will accompany said development. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yes, just, Kate. Just to fill that out a little further, um, this happened recently again with a very mm -hmm. similar lot. And the condition sounded something like this. It was that upon application for a zoning permit to con construct the structure on the new lot, landscaping would be delineated as necessary to meet the requirements of 3506.F, the landscaping section, of the zoning bylaw. So it says your subdivision permit will remain valid so long as you follow through on that landscaping piece once a house is built. So that's what, um, does, does that yes. seem all right? Yeah. Okay. We, ac we actually started on that um, in the fall in anticipating of um, doing something else, we we added and and um, between that lot and the next lot up, um, mm -hmm. we added four new uh, lilac trees mm -hmm. on, on the property line, um, and we simply did it so that they can start getting some growth, so that mm -hmm. they can, and then along the the top of that yellow line, which would be the um, before it slopes down. We added a couple more there, and, and the plan is to continue to add some. Mm -hmm. Good. So you're right. There's nothing to be removed, and our right. plan is to add more, because mm -hmm. we definitely will eventually want some sort of buffer mm -hmm. between the two properties once it's once we start developing or somebody develops that, so that there is a, a clear separation of. Where right. I live and where the yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so would, maybe a question for Meredith and or the chair. Would it be reasonable to request just some dots on the on the site plan um, with submission of the final material? Or, uh, so amend the site plan that currently has the slopes as something to put in the file. Yeah. To with put the, the show where the current lilacs are. Just and, and that. Yeah. Yeah. Or we could do that. Is that overkill? I don't know if we even need it. If we just okay. add the condition that yeah. you put, yeah. then that also lets them figure out what actually survives the next winter or so. Right. I'm sure it's going to be just fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, no need to update the site plan. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And just from my perspective, Thank uh, you. I'm, I'm all in favor of, of making the landscape uh, condition of the approval 
but I would want to leave some flexibility based right. upon right. the design of the ultimate mm -hmm. structure that's built. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's absolutely. The, and that's why that's that condition the intent of the condition right. as, mm -hmm. as discussed well, as necessary to meet the requirements of the bylaws so of <clears throat> flexibility for the site context. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, and I, you know, I think there's a, there's competing factors, which one of which is renewable energy and solar. You know, you can't start imposing landscaping plans before they've situated if somebody wants to put up solar panels because those can interfere. So, um, so I think the greatest amount of flexibility, yet at the same time recognizing that, you know, part of the responsibility of developing this particular site is then creating these buffers so that um, it blends in as infill uh, <clears throat> over time so that it, it stops looking you know like a brand new uh, house where one wasn't and looks more like something that fits into the surrounding area so <laughs> initially on proposed lot two <coughs> once you drop down onto the lower section is there down there there's an and it would be on proposed lot too there's an established vegetable garden mm -hmm. there's a raspberry um, patch and there's eight established blueberry plants down in that area so Excellent. once you drop down it's it's another nice area down below mm -hmm. right towards Harrison Avenue yeah right and I mean I think that factors into how you build or you know your successor builds his or her landscaping plan because if that already exists and that's maintained um then that that goes towards that kind of vegetative buffer um and comes with its own obligations i mean obviously if you have a vegetable garden you need as much to full sun as you possibly can in that particular area otherwise you have uh tomatoes that don't start coming out until september um so i i understand that and i think that's where that's really where we're looking to give you flexibility I, any other conditions or issues that any other board members wish to discuss? I, I, I think, you know, part of this is I'm also taking the staff report, which we've all reviewed, which, you know, notes that this, this really is a subdivision that fits within the various characteristics of the district standards. So in lieu of that, um, I will take a motion from um, the board. I'll, uh, I'll make a motion to approve the application uh, for a two-lot subdivision as presented in the application and supporting materials uh, subject to the following conditions. Within 180 days of the decision, the applicant shall record a final plat, survey plat in the land records for the procedures detailed in section 4405 of the zoning regulations. Um, and then within 60 days of the decision, the applicant shall submit to the zoning administrator uh, and record in the land records a final signed version of an agreement memorializing the access easement over proposed lot one to proposed lot two. On the drive. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yep. Yeah, we have to have to actually have that access yeah. agreement recorded. Because it's a condition of the approval that that exists and mm -hmm. we don't want to create a lot and then have it not have legal access. Mm -hmm. So for the subdivision to be valid, you have to do that within 60 days. And then finally, a condition that upon application for a zoning permit to construct a structure on lot two, that landscaping will be delineated as necessary to meet the requirements of uh, the zoning bylaw as uh, described by the chair earlier. And, and also I'll make express that the approval includes a waiver of any 45 feet requirement for the driveway. And the utilities. And a waiver of any requirement that utilities be underground. Very good. Motion by Ryan. Second. Second by Tom. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion as stated, please raise your right hand. Congratulations. You have Thank subdivision you. approval that is pending Here's, these oh, other. Person, 180, that's the new surveys <coughs> filed with the city. Correct. Uh, that's the final survey plat. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Then you can come down and see me tomorrow, too. We'll talk about it tomorrow. That's yeah. that's, good. That's, yeah. it's, it's eventually signed by by me and recorded in the um, okay. land records. The Mylar, yep. yeah. The Mylar, it's, no, it's the Mylar. Yep. Yeah. Yep, I got it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 
All right. Our next order of business is uh, 29 College Street. As I indicated earlier, I will be recusing myself for this portion and turn it over to the Vice Chair, Ms. McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Hello, welcome. All right, this is final subdivision plan review for 29 College Street. The applicant is the Vermont College of Fine Arts. And I think I need to put you under oath, is that correct? Because the previous is not. Yes. Okay. And is there anyone else here that may wish to speak on the matter? Great, so if, if you think you might speak, I will put you under oath as well. So please raise your right hand. Um, all right. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give on the matter before us is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we'll have, we'll have you uh, introduce yourself. Um, I just want to recap that at the previous meeting, my understanding is that there were outstanding questions about a few things. Um, bringing the driveway and the curb cut into compliance, um, some landscaping details, some shared parking details. And then in addition, um, based on the discussion, there was an outstanding question about the role of the master plan, which was a part of the previous zoning district, which was known as an AI, Academic Institution PUD, <coughs> Land Unit Development. That was part of the 2011 zoning. It is no longer part of the 2018 zoning. And it is also my understanding that we sought counsel from, um, from city attorney. And I would like to uh, ask Meredith to summarize for us what we have learned about that question since the last meeting. Um, so really the basics are that because the AIPUD expired and then the 2011 regulations were done away with and we adopted new 2018 regulations, that the only thing that applies to this subdivision application is the 2018 regulations. There are no PUDs um, currently in effect for the college, um, so we can't, can't really reference those, that just no longer applies, um, and that the basic rule that an application before the board must be governed by the zoning bylaws in effect when the application was filed is what governs at this point. Um, if I could so, ask a clarifying question mm -hmm. about that. In the past, when we had AIPUD applications, they came along with a master plan because right. that was a requirement of the AIPUD. Even if there had been a master plan in effect, would it have been valid under the 2018 regulations, given that it would not have been required under if, the 2018 regulations? I think if the, I think that that's a whole that's a whole other thing. Okay. Um, and. I didn't require the city attorney to dig down into sure. that because, it, but okay. but I think that yes, if the AIPUD had still been in effect, if it was still within its active period and hadn't mm -hmm. expired, that's a whole different ballgame, and I think that then we would be dealing with those old regulations, but we're not. Okay, so we don't have a master plan because it was part of something that has expired. Right. Okay, so we're just dealing with a lot that is being requested to be subdivided. Okay. So they don't get, you know. They don't get any bonuses that they would have gotten under PUD. Mm -hmm. We're just looking at the subdivision regulations. Okay. Um, Meredith, are there any other outstanding issues that you can think of other than the ones I listed? Um, I think for outstanding issues, it was just the ones you listed. There okay. may be a question or two about how the um, shared walkway is referenced right. on the, the survey, but I okay. think that's, we'll, you know, that's just we'll something we'll to get to when we get there. Great. Okay, um, so what we'll do is um, we'll, give, we'll give you a chance to introduce yourself and walk through those outstanding issues. And at that point, um, we'll be able to hear from anyone who wishes to speak after we've heard it presented from the applicant. Um, we'll have some discussion back and forth with the board and, and then move to deliberation. So that's the order of operations here this evening. Um, One second. So yes. I remember last time you had a hard time hearing. Would you like to sit at the table so you can hear? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. What a good idea. And I suppose anyone else who has anything that they need, please give me a sign. And when you do come to um, give testimony, I'd just ask that folks go up to that microphone oh. for posterity. Um, all right. So, Ms. Gustafson. So I'm Katie Gustafson. I work at Vermont College of Fine Arts. Um, I'm the vice president for campus planning. Um, and submitted this application. Uh, after the last meeting, um, 
Uh, one of the questions was about the length of the driveway, making sure that that, in fact, met the current regulations. Um, and it nearly does. It's about uh, three inches shy. Um, but what I have suggested and the surveyor agreed was reasonable is the carport uh, you know, it's open-ended, so you can sort of extend it just slightly beyond that covering um, to, to get the 36 feet required for a two-car um, driveway. Um, so, hoping that that works in terms of the board question with that. Um, then the next question was, uh, I don't know if people want to ask anything about that. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Does anyone have questions about the proposed arrangement for uh, the driveway and parking on site? And is it the case that only one parking spot is required? Right, only one parking space is required, but at the last hearing there was discussion that typically we often see two cars mm -hmm. for single family homes, and so there was just a request that we make sure that we could fit two. Okay. But yeah, only one is required. Okay, thank you. Um, did you want to respond to uh, that? I just remembered that the other question just was about the curb cut, mm -hmm. um, and I haven't gotten final. Um, the Department of Public Works wasn't able to come out and, and look at it before this hearing, um, but they are aware that it does actually exist already. We're not adding a new curb cut. And they said when the time came, they would come and make sure that it meets current regulations that it would need to, and that also um, reestablishing the driveway would also meet the current regulations. They didn't expect that, that it would be any kind of issue whatsoever, but that there might be a little bit of work. It's, it's, I actually can't remember at the moment if the driveway is grass or if it's still um, some kind of rock surface it's just starting to appear so that'll be something that I'll be working with them um, and then if, if this is approved in the near future. Okay. Thanks. Rob, did you have a question? Um, I was just looking for, um, I'm sure it's in a regulation somewhere, about the measurement of the driveway from the sidewalk versus the right of, the right of way. Um, I, I've never, the, the starting of the driveway, so 36 feet from the si edge of the sidewalk, mm -hmm. and that's spelled out in our regulations I just didn't know it. it's it's not necessarily spelled out that was but this is something that ha how department of public works wanted that ex extended driveway from you know it's to fit that in there especially because we only actually only need room for one parking space um but yeah it's standard is from the back of okay. the driveway or sorry back of the sidewalk, the sidewalk yeah. okay. and here because they've done the survey um was it actually, was it, th I, thought, I think it actually said in here it was 36 inches from the um, they property have, line. They have back of sidewalk here. Hold on one second, because there's two different references, I think. Note, sub note three. Oh, yeah, it's from back of sidebox. Right. Yep. But that's okay. They, they're not going to be in the sidewalk. They're not going to be in the street. Yes. So the plows aren't going to be hitting them. All right, great. And as part of that, um, it was noted by um, the Department of Public Works that the existing stormwater catch basin um, was not shown on the site plan. And was yes. that added in the most recent version? It's not in the most recent version. Okay. It, will be in the final version. Okay. If, if approved, it'll be on the final. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, so could you tell us a little bit about um, the landscaping? Sure. Um, so one of the things we were hoping to do um, was to actually extend the privacy fence, which is around the back side of the building. It's sort of a horizontal um, run rather than a vertical um, to keep with the the same look that is already there and that that would essentially run um, between the two buildings where the two buildings are closest together so that it would give us the five foot setback from uh, the property line to the buildings uh, following the line of the fence that comes through that around that back corner 
Um, and then because of the sort of funny little job we have to take with the property line, that likely at that point we would, uh, what we're proposing is then we would change to some combination of shrubs or small trees to demarcate the property line um, the rest of the way okay. around the corner. Um, we we were, th the college was thinking we would do something on the shorter variety, um, but we're open to any anything. I think the thought there was that with the carport, just if people needed to be putting ladders up to maintain, work on the roof, we just mm -hmm. were thinking that larger, um, a, a higher visual barrier might make it more difficult for the property owner mm -hmm. to, to deal with something like that. Mm -hmm. But if the board felt it was Im important that um, there be higher um, shrubs, were certainly open to that. Mm -hmm. Is, is it the case that the location where the shrubs are proposed is not between two buildings? And the reason I'm asking that is to understand whether it's necessary for those, those five shrub clusters to serve a privacy function. I mean, I, I think that the fence certainly is there mm -hmm. in its location so that there is privacy between the two buildings. Um, and, and really, beyond the patio, the college doesn't really use that front part so that privacy becomes less of an issue the closer you get to the road. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that exactly answers your question. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Just um, interested if others have questions about the suitability of that landscaping at that location. No, I mean, I think they look fine to me. I, 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 I'm comfortable just having the the kind of condition be fairly general as proposed here. Five clusters, indigenous trees and or shrubs of appropriate size. Mm -hmm. I think to serve the function that we're recognizing is not necessarily really privacy, but more demarcating the kind of line between the two properties. And so, you know, I think um, giving the applicant some discretion in how best to meet that is, is fine with me, so. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about the landscaping? There, there is a note here, and this is um, mostly a point of interest. Um, is the Daphne shrub a in, uh, native species? Uh, I think maybe not, or at least if it's not, it's not one we will use based okay. on what. So you've seen the flagging yes. of that particular shrub in the staff report. All right, thank you. We'll keep those berries that are poisonous to mammals away from mammals. Thank you. Um, all right, so um, another, another question that I believe the board had was um, regarding the shared parking plan. And if you could describe, just for the record, um, what, why that is needed, what the, uh, what the, um, the use of what, the other building? Yeah, what the building at um, number 31 will be used for and how the parking will, will serve that building. Yep. Um, so that other building is faculty housing, um, and it houses, I believe, eight individuals, and there is parking that runs just to the, I think it's the north of 31 College Street, which runs behind Gary Library, Noble Hall, um, Bishop Hatch. There's plenty of parking. There was, there was no parking associated with that particular building at any point anyway, so they okay. would just continue to park in the other designated BCFA parking lots. Okay. And are visiting faculty in Crowley on an intermittent basis or all the time? How, not, how often is it not occupied? Often, not all the time. I would say we have residencies between a third and maybe, maybe a little more than a third of the year. Okay. okay. Well, that gives us a sense of the intensity of use. Yeah. Um, and was that also the case for Number 29, was number 29 also for visiting faculty used in a similar way? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thoughts from other board members? Not at this point. Okay. I would ask if there's comments from... Uh, I, I do have one more thing before we move on to that. Okay. Thank you, though, for reminding me. If, if you wouldn't mind waiting just a moment. Thank you. We'll make sure to get to you. No problem. Um, so one item that I don't believe was raised last time, but that um, uh, it was a question of mine, 
is um, on the site plan, there's under the subdivision notes, subdivision note number two is about the existing walk between the two buildings. Mm -hmm. And then also in the project description, it says um, VCFA or its successors um, shall maintain the walk in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. And um, I was wondering why that was necessary. And um, I, I, I thought to make the suggestion that perhaps it needn't be on the site plan since that would be an agreement between the two, the owners of the two parcels in the future, it doesn't need to be, it doesn't affect the function of the lots as far as our criteria are concerned. We can certainly take that okay. off. Yeah. Okay. Just get, per, maintain, preserve flexibility in the future. If there are no other questions from the board, I'll invite some public comment and I'll invite you to go first, sir. Please just introduce yourself and um, yeah. can we ask Roger for addresses? Oh, we, don't need, we don't need address. We don't need your address, just your name. Oh, Roger Kellogg, uh, three camp just across the street. All right. Uh, when you talk about the fence between the Crownley building has a refrigeration, or, mm -hmm. which is really very loud. It probably makes sense if anybody bought that house that wouldn't want to hear it. We hear it on the other side of the street. So, uh, Joe and I talk about it. We hear it all, all summer long. Mm. It might be useful for you to make that. And it's just part of your landscaping a little more substantial so they don't hear it. It's really pretty loud. It's just as a, as, a, as a recommendation for someone living in that house, it would be certainly not for them. And we don't have any objection for it being a private dwelling. It's never been a problem. Because it always was. Question: Is it the re refrigeration uh, for air conditioning, or is it to run a kitchen? Or it's a HVAC unit, so it's both heat and cooling. I mean, the older units are much louder than the newer ones. I, well, so it went in in 2015 when the building was built. So oh, I, I, I don't know what. Um, yeah, so it's relatively new. So there are ways to. Uh, to reduce that sound off-site considerably by by the use the judicious use of both vegetation and uh, physical barriers such as a fence. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm looking at our our. Do, do we have a performance standards? Mm -hmm. That is is this consideration among our criteria for this? I want to um, I want to hang this on something and understand how it fits into what we can do and not do. If I may put you on the spot, uh, I think that's mm, I, that when you're thinking performance standards, that's usually conditional use. Right. I think okay. you have the landscaping and screening section. Mm -hmm. um, hold on. Let me scan and see if we can hang it on anything or. Yeah, maybe maybe character of the neighborhood sort of oh, it's, it's already no. there. Yeah, we're not reviewing the uh, the, the existing noise -making, construction. Uh, entity, That's true. But I mean, yeah, I I think we can accept that as some constructive feedback yeah. um, that that uh, perhaps could be mm -hmm. mitigated with the fence. But um, we'll, we'll keep, keep that in mind. Did Did you want to say anything else at all? All right. Would anyone else like to be heard on this matter? Okay. Um, let's deliberate. Any further discussion by board members? Uh, outstanding questions um, based on what you've heard. Could I make one comment? Yes, please. So in the staff report under the proposed motions, I had put a condition, a, a draft condition in here about getting the um, written confirmation from the Department of Public Works about how they were going to be dealing with the driveway and the curb cut and if it needed a permit or not. Mm -hmm. I had that as a condition that they had to resolve before filing the final plat. Mm -hmm. It might make more sense to deal with that as something that has to be resolved. Well, no, because we're not talking about future development. It's just something for you to think about how you want to condition that um, because we are dealing with snow and ice and, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how quickly they're going to try and file the final plat and if there's time to get 
you know, get those permits or that decision from DPW considering mm -hmm. certain conditions. I, mean, I think it's nice. clear that we need to, uh, that the access needs to be constructed consistent with DPW standards and that having this new access be reestablished at the length we is a condition of the improve of the approval right if for some reason you're unable to get DPW to uh, are unable to meet their standards then you will be unable to comply with that condition and, and therefore you will not have a subdivision I think um, I don't know that we need anything further than to say that the access will comply with DPW okay. standards, I mean, okay. my thoughts. And the other part, that the applicant has obtained or will obtain the necessary permits prior to beginning work, which is assurance that com that the design will comply with and the requirements. And Kurt did um, write back to me last week to say he really didn't think it would be a problem. So I feel confident with that condition. Okay. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. With which? What we just discussed or the condition that's written in the staff report? Was there a difference between? Well, so the, the condition in the staff report says that you will get the permits or have something from the Department of Public, uh, to say we'll, we'll get, um, has obtained or will obtain the necessary permits prior to beginning work, something from Department of Public Works that says you will get them or don't need them right. before this final survey plat is recorded. So you think you can get that from Kurt? Something I, I'm sorry, may, maybe I, I'm a little confused. Um, if the applicant goes to get the permit from the Department mm -hmm. of Public Works that indicates it's permittable or if they obtain the permit it indicates that right. it's permittable in that case is it also necessary to get a note from Public Works saying that they're in the process of applying for a permit right. uh, no so because that's a right. that's how I'm reading it written confirmation from the Montpelier Department of Public Works that approves right. the plan Th that's why I said applicant has obtained or will obtain because sometimes the paperwork's filed, but they have to actually look at the site without the snow. So That's, sorry, the, so issue, this is why the, saying, the submission yeah. of the paperwork alone is not sufficient. They also so, need a note. No, if they get if they get the permit and give me the permit, that's fine. Same thing. They're the same thing. Okay, right. they sounded like two different things. I think the concern is that if you, if it's not clear yet, because they haven't gone out there to look whether or not this is even likely to be possible to meet standards, then mm -hmm. you don't want a final plat filed in the land records that ultimately isn't valid because so. after that. Um, but it seems like it's likely that um, DPW, that you can either get or be in the process of obtaining yeah. those permits and mm -hmm. uh, that you recognize that uh, it behooves you to find out sooner rather than later Absolutely. if that's going to be an issue because... Uh, um, that's that is a condition of the approval that that it meets standards. Okay. There are so many reasons we're all ready for the snow to melt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was many. it was more sort of the timing listed yeah. on here that yeah. was the issue. Thank you. It sounds like we've got clarity on that now. Um, is there any further discussion by board members? Any last comments from the applicant? Okay. In that case, I will entertain a motion. Go for it. Motion to approve the application Z 2019-017 for two lot subdivision as presented. Um, the applicant shall follow erosion control practices as outlined in section uh, 3008. Um, as discussed uh, a, um, with uh, regarding public works uh, approval, um, if a driveway needs to be constructed, it should be constructed to Department of Public Works standards. Um, within 180 days of the decision, I should file a final survey plat in the Montpelier Land Records as detailed in Section 4405. Did I miss anything? I, one, one, one addition that uh, landscaping plan will have a combination of up to five clusters of indigenous trees and their shrubs. Appropriate size will be planted to clearly demarcate the property line uh, and also that the representation by the applicant that a new privacy fence construction is being proposed as well to demarcate the two properties. Thank you, Tom. So um, I'm going to say that we had a motion from Rob. Did we have a second? Seconded. We had a second from Ryan. And then can I consider yours a friendly amendment, Tom? Sure. Very good. Yes. Do you accept the friendly Absolutely. amendment? Yep. Do you accept the friendly amendment? I do amendment? as well, yes. Great. And if I may offer another tiny friendly amendment, it's to um, please indicate on the final site plan the location of the storm drain. Yes. Is that acceptable? Yes. All right, great. We have a motion and a second. Two friendly amendments. Any further discussion? Uh, sorry. 
What about the perpetual maintenance of the walkway removed from the final survey? Should that be one of the conditions, um, or we just know that she's going to do that? Among the standard conditions. That okay. Is, is, is that what you're thinking of, the standard condition for um, plant shall be maintained in a... No, no, the, because right now the survey plat oh, shows yes, the, the perpetual maintenance of the walkway. Okay. So should that be? That would be the last little tweak to please remove that from the site plan to preserve your options into the future. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your right hands. Any opposed? No? The motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much, and thank you all for participating. Thank you, Meredith. Thank you. Especially since you and I forgot to answer the computer. Good work. Excellent. Thank you. All right, this brings us to the next item of business, which is a sketch subdiv subdivision review for Junction Associates. If you'll come forward. So, just to give you an overview, I mean, go ahead and have a seat. You don't have to stand. Um, and is anyone here to be heard on this subdivision, this preliminary review? Okay, uh, just so I know, and let me go over the sort of process. This is uh, an informal hearing process at this point. No one goes under oath. We're not taking evidence. This is really just an opportunity for the applicant to describe uh, what they plan to do for the board to give some feedback as well as review some of the technical concerns that DPW is starting to raise, uh, things that we would like to see for the final subdivision review. Um, so it's it's an informal process. None of this is testimony. A lot of this is just to give you an opportunity to go to, over it and troubleshoot and spot things so that it goes much smoother as you saw the first two applications do tonight. Yes, and the public will have an opportunity for feedback, which is why I asked um, for an opportunity. Because oftentimes, if somebody has an issue, um, addressing it at this stage can come to a better resolution than coming forward at the night of the application. OK. So if you'll introduce yourselves. Good evening. I'm uh, Jason Merrill. I'm Elliot Curtin. OK. And we're here for a two-lot subdivision at 301 River Street in Montpelier. Uh, we're looking to create two lots um, from a 5.6 parcel lot. Um, the first lot, lot one, will be uh, 2.01 acres, and the second lot will be 3.66 acres. Um, our plans at this point are to subdivide the property in order to sell off the lot number one for the building, and then no future plans for development of lot two at this time. Okay. Um, so I'll dive right into one of the issues that I saw right away that certainly one of the things that DPW is. Do you have the, do you have oh, the actual address? No. I don't have that. Okay. Yes. Meredith's going to give you a copy of the staff report because oh, a lot of. Oh, you have the staff report. Oh, yeah, have the oh. Well, thanks. Yeah. So one of my questions is how, how do you plan to have access to the lot number two? Um, well, at this time, we don't plan on having access to it until the future development is planned. Right. Um, but <clears throat> we have been working with a civil engineer for access. Um, we have a, a sketch in place. Um, to gain access similar to where uh, Tom McArdle had uh, suggested the, the best location for it. So so right around almost almost at the boundary line between um, the two? It is south of the property line, um, approximately 100 feet uh, just shy of the, the culvert, um, which crosses the road. OK. And then would this, uh, would this access go up into the property itself, or would this sort of it would go be up for the into the property? Yes. Okay. Because um, one of the issues I was noticing was that you know it looks like there's a nice big flat spot at the top, 
of this three acre parcel, but if memory serves me correct, it's fairly steep closer to the road. Yeah, um, the access, except, uh, excuse me, the access itself um, was a previous driveway there for a house that was there years ago. Um, it was the old entrance to the old Dewey Park. Um, so there is uh, an old road there now. Right. <coughs> excuse me, the new access would be a shallower grade um, road built into the property at the proper grades for state spec. Okay. Okay, and because I mean, would it would it intersect with the old road at any point, or would it be the old sort driveway? Of the old driveway. Sorry, it, it would be right in the place of the old driveway. Yes. Okay, and that's where the old driveway came out. Is that that point? Or? Correct. It's right okay. there. Yes. When when you say old, can you give us a sense of that meant if, if that meant 1940 or 1995? Just it was so we can. Definitely not 1995. Okay. Um, I, I'm guessing it was pre-1960. Okay, the reason I'm asking is to try and understand how that driveway functioned um, in relation to the road, given that the use and intensity of cars on that road has sure. changed a lot in those years, so, yep. yeah. All right. What was the old Dewey Park that you referenced? Uh, the Dewey Park was a location that the trolley used to stop at and drop folks off to go picnic at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's on maps from the late 1800s around 1900 presumably having something to do with Montpelier's favorite son Admiral Dewey I assume um, that but yeah <laughs> I didn't know the history the remaining history may be on the menu at a nearby restaurant <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay um, so I think that's going to obviously be one of the the concerns is you know because of the technical challenges of this parcel to and I understand you're not going to be building a road or you're not proposing a road but one of the requirements that will be necessary is just to show us that a road can be built and that the property can be developed and you know one of the just as a way of example one of the first applicants tonight you know when he came forward we wanted him to to look at because he had specific grade challenges with his property of how it was going to be developed even though he's not actually developing it and where where a likely building would be um you know this is in a c commercial district and presumably you know somebody's not situating a uh, country estate there but likely to if it's consistent with the other recent development in that area is likely to be a commercial one so you know keeping in mind the, the limitations that that might put it would be helpful just understand to make sure that that would could be used consistent with its purpose um so it's you know it may involve some engineering expense just to un, just to have an engineer's report or at least an opinion um that this can be done so um, what we've done at this point is um, working with our engineer, we have a uh, complete um, plan in place for future development um, with um, the actual lay of the land and the stormwater uh, discharge all designed along with that road. But That's great. Obviously, nothing planned at this point, but we have that in the works. Okay. Do we have that yet, or is that something? No. Okay. No. Okay. okay. Uh, obviously, it's something we're going to want to see. To, sure, to, and I spoke yeah. with Mr. McArdle today and Great. told him that I would meet with him to go over that plan, and uh, he said he would be more than glad to and get his feedback. Okay. Oh, any other questions about, like, the driveway or the access? Well, I, did, I think that the access and egress is obviously very key to, to uh, any plan you come up with. I mean, being in that section of roadway which is quite hazardous without anything additional being placed in there sure. um, that is going to be something that that um, just echo the chair's uh, mm -hmm. comments uh, uh, it's going to be very uh, important uh, as far as developing a, a sustainable plan mm -hmm. for when we get to the final uh, approval process I think we've also got some specific numbers to attach to that that you've probably already given some thought to, which is that there need to be 120 feet between driveways. So um, staff estimate is that the approximate area that we've been talking about is about 100 feet. Um, so that would not be enough. And I don't, I don't know that an exception is granted for things like that, especially when there's the safety issues. 
Well, I think there's an exception if there's no other place on the parcel to put it. If there's no other good place, since this is, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Unless you're saying that we just don't approve the subdivision. Well. If if it can't be accessed safely, it may not be a suitable lot to create. I mean, one of our charges is to create lots that can be safely developed. Um, So it's all kind of in the hopper. Something maybe to consider here, and this, we're creating lot one and then there's remaining lands. Do we have a requirement to ensure that we have a two-lot subdivision? As long as we're not creating, as long as the remaining lands aren't tiny, tiny, but we're creating lot one as a developable lot. I guess the question there, they are trying to, to create lot two as a developable lot also. Right, they both need to be developable in some right. fashion. You right. need to have access to both unless one is gonna be conserved right. land. You want to develop both lots. Yeah. Well, even if they don't want to, but they want to sell it, they're going to get more money for a developable lot than <laughs> um, one that's more of a museum piece. Um, okay. Well, one other issue, and I'm sure you're aware of this, uh, we've had a recent change through our interim zoning bylaws about the 30% slopes. Mm-hmm. That's obviously all over this parcel. Um, come April 17th, those interim bylaws come into place. Meredith's going to have another point to add on to that, however. Uh, so I, I, the April 17th effective date mm-hmm. that I put in here, um, that was written into the staff report before I had confirmation from Mike Miller, our planning director, that those actually took effect immediately. Okay. So any so application, they did, okay. they did take effect immediately, and any applications that we receive from, um, here, on. from here on will have okay. the new interim rules applying. So you don't even have that delay. So, um, but obviously now, again, you know, one of the reasons they allow for 30% slopes is to sh- have an engineer say, this is suitable for development. Um, and so I, I think you're hearing uh, a common frame uh you know the access and the traffic the safety for getting off of what's an extremely busy road um and that doesn't have a particularly good sort of long it's not a long straightaway um so making sure that it's safe access and ingress and egress are going to be important making sure that we can see that this is in fact a developable lot and the fact that there was at one point a house up there is certainly helpful and we're not looking for a full-blown engineering plan of a of a project but just simply to be able to satisfy your requirement that you establish that through a professional engineer that this is in fact a developable lot um i think will be sufficient although you will be the first to go through this process. Um, so Meredith should be able to help you on that. Um, and so it sounds like you've already got an engineer working on your uh, drainage and storm water flows. Um, there's issues with wastewater and, and uh, potable water. So is the, is the building on lot one currently hooked up to city water and sewer? It is. Okay, so it's just a matter of extending along there, which it's available to do. But for lot number two, we yes. have a, a new service for both water and sewer. It wouldn't be connected to lot one. Right, but it would be off of the city's Correct. lines. Yes. Okay. Um, Yeah, I think most of that is echoed. Yeah, those issues are pretty much echoed throughout in most of the things that they flagged. I'm just double checking to make sure that we've gotten a lot of these. Does anybody else have any other questions? I think go ahead, Kate. A couple in there, all related to access. So, um, is is it the is this a class one highway or state highway rather? It's not this a state is, highway. No, okay. it's so federal. It's, it's a town. federal well, highway. It's, right, but for purposes of... Right, but for... Sorry, I'm getting thrown off by the... 
Maybe I'll just ask my question instead. Yeah, ask, ask your question. It is. Ask your um, question. Do they need to get an access management permit from the state, an 1111? Or is that authority delegated to the city of Montpelier? Right, they don't, it's deli It's classed on the, the highway maps as a class one city highway. Class one. Because the city, there are no state controlled highways within the bounds of the city of Montpelier. Okay, all right, that, okay, so any access managed, any access permits would be issued by the city. I think that's within. I think there's a section of 89. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, well that's okay. not the same thing, as <laughs> that's not the same, not that's state. an interstate highway. Interstate highway, that's not, highway. That's it's not a It's a limited class. access highway. Okay, yeah. Sorry. But that's not 1111 for our purposes. We yes. don't have anything on 1111. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't mess okay. with me. Um, I am, the I am, reason I'm asking is that, um, there, we have a provision that says if the lot shall be accessed from a state highway, the applicant needs to provide a letter from VTrans. But what I'm hearing is that instead of VTrans issuing those permits, the city does. Right. That's what I wanted to confirm. Um, my other question is, um, you know, we, we talked in a previous application about um, cross access, which is access from one lot to another, not directly from the highway, so that they can share a driveway, especially for commercial uses. So looking at the site plan, I see lot one has its driveways, and including one that appears to go behind the building is... Could you explore the feasibility of that being an access up here? And I'm, um, I'm putting it out there in a if structural way. It may not functionally work. Like if this is a really high demand business, then maybe lot one doesn't want cars coming and going. Functionally around like the to, back, no. Yeah. But on the front side, mm -hmm. um, from the southern side of the building, mm -hmm. straight south. Mm -hmm. That is a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, and that would make it so that there's only one, one curb cut, cut for the two for lots. Two, correct. Which seems like it would solve would a lot a, of problems. There would, would be an easement for lot one mm -hmm. to gain access yeah. through lot two's curb cut. So it would go that way. It would be that the access would be granted to lot. It wouldn't be that lot one, where the existing building is, is granting the access to lot two. It would be the other way around. Correct. How, how would how would that work if lot, lot two doesn't own lot one? Oh, <coughs> I get a little confused about who's, who's the grantee lot. and the grantor. In order, they're all owned by the same person right now. Right now. Oh, okay. We are both. So if I've sold off lot one already. In order for us to get okay. the permit, Sorry. we have to combine drive. How much did you pay for? It? Yeah. <laughs> Talk to you later. It's always the ocean. <laughs> That's what I'm told. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so it's nice to know that that is a possibility that could utilize an existing curb cut, save you some engineering potentially, and um, answer a lot of these questions. So maybe just something to explore with DPW if that's something that and that's, makes sense. That's what we'll talk about. Cool. Yeah, we're not. I mean, this is just a discussion. We're yes. it's up to you how to design your project. If you want to put the sure. put the put the access where you want, but well, I'd, I'd rather do it with my hands than have to come to the meetings multiple times to get it taken care of. So if Mr. Right. Charles and I can come up with a good plan, then I'm, I'm good with physically doing it. Is there a technical right. review, or is it just more of an informal meeting with Tom Picardo that they're planning? Um, it, it depends on the, the application. I think what they're talking about right now is they're one-on-one -on -one with Tom. Okay. And then often, because oftentimes applicants will do that, they'll have their individual yep. meetings with Tom. And then come to me, and if I have further questions, I can go back to Tom. Um, you know, this right. isn't something where I think other committees um, or other other departments need to be brought in too much on this one. Two additional notes. Um, one is you said you already have your sort of wastewater and store. Well, you have your stormwater plan and. We have a stormwater plan in place. We do have a, a wastewater permit for the subdivision completed. I just received it. We have to file that with the city. Is there likely to be, have to be any blasting on the site for for the installation of any of these lines or stormwater for new lines? Either for the new lines or for any of the stormwater plans. Um, for the new construction of lot number two, there would be significant blasting done on the property in order to make it uh, a buildable lot. Okay. I mean, I think, though, one thing that um, obviously because the city 
does regulate such activities. Yep. It, it's worth exploring with uh, Tom McArdle when you have those conversations with him, just if there's any requirements uh, that you need to be aware of in advance. I mean, obviously, there'll have to be a bla blasting plan put into place yep. once there's a plan to develop this in place. But um, nevertheless, I think it's worth worth having a conversation. Um, in, in the past, when I've met with Mr. McCarter, we have discussed this. Good. And, um, the city has their own criteria to follow for, for the blasting, so. Right, and that's, that. I mean, that's, that's fairly straightforward. It's a regulatory. Sure. Um, you know, the safety issue. Um, the only other thing is that, you know, of course, we will require certain narratives. So, you know, addressing the um, capacity of community facilities and utilities that this is going to have an impact on. Um, you know, we've talked about the um, character of the neighborhood, the um, landscaping, you know, we've this is a forested parcel of land. I presume you're going to have to cut some trees to develop this, especially if you're doing blasting. Um, but uh, as you can see from before, we're not looking to necessarily impose a specific type of landscaping plan, but just a willingness to accept some something that would allow, that would be consistent with this area and a commercial development as well as an existing commercial development by its side. Um, any other questions for anyone? No. And uh, sorry, Mr. Singer, is it? Uh, if you want to come to the mic, yeah, if you have any questions or comments. Uh, or? Not, not really much, but uh, uh, my name is Josh Singer. I'm the current tenant of the building in Lot 1 um, and a potential buyer of that lot. So I came just to kind of hear more about the plans and understand sort of what, what, what's going on. I just had like a couple questions in mind. One was, what the size of the, the lot one is going to be. I think I heard 2.01. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the other question was about access. Which we didn't talk about. So I just kind of want, I didn't, that didn't go clear, so I wanted to hear more just like the board here. Um, you know, I guess if there was that choice, of course I would prefer it if I was the potential owner on a separate access. I understand exploring the idea. We might have a fight here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just came to kind of hear more. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, let me ask this question. On, on lot one, you know, you've got this commercial development building right there at the street. I think you, you know, did a great job of rehabbing it. I remember when this project came up before us a long time ago. Um, or not that long ago, but it seems... Uh, is there any potential for the other rest of Lot 1, or is this something where, um, you know, once this subdivision occurs, that's really it? It becomes these two parcels. Lot 1 could potentially have additions put onto it, um, mm -hmm. but you're limited with parking. Um, the majority of that lot uh, is a very steep slope behind it, so um, you'd be limited on how much square footage you could add to the, to the building. Okay. But I mean, the building itself could obviously be built out Correct. a little bit more. And, yes. Yeah, but we're not talking like putting something up in the back corner or subdividing that into a, a, another parcel as well. No. no. All right. These things can often end in a whimper more than a bang. Um, any other questions from any other board members? Good. Well, obviously, Meredith will help you through. Uh, and Mr. Singer, I'd certainly, if you have any questions that are unanswered or, or considering, Meredith can, you know, this is all public documents, so you're welcome to come and take a look and review. And uh, certainly, if you're going to be negotiating with uh, these gentlemen, that you'll want to equip yourself with uh, as much information as possible. Um, so I'm not seeing any red flags from any of the other board members as to this development. I think once you work out some of the technical access issues, um, that's going to be, you know, your big, your big sort of hurdle. And then otherwise, its size is consistent. There's obviously going to be room to develop within the parcel number two. There's already development on parcel number one. Um, I think it's fairly straightforward. So. Good luck. Great. Thank you. Good. Thanks. Thanks.
All right. Uh, next order of business is uh, other business, which includes a notice of our next regularly scheduled meeting, which will be Monday, April 15th, 2019, uh, at 7 p.m., same bat channel, same bat station here at Montpelier City Hall. Any other business that anybody wishes to address? Mr. Sure. Chair, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I will accept said motion to adjourn. Uh, second? Second. Okay, motion by Kevin, second by Tom. All those in favor of adjourning, please raise your right hand. And we are adjourned.